Hello all, this is uh, Dr. Boney, uh, pronounced like skinny, like bony. Uh, welcome to MMSC 491 uh, or 691. Um, I'm going to be recording the same video for both courses because they're in essence uh, the same. Um, so regardless of which section, everything I'm going to show you is uh, pertinent to you. Uh, obviously the first thing you want to do is uh, go to the syllabus. Uh, and once you open the syllabus, uh, you can go ahead and read all of this. Uh, obviously, to get in touch with me, here is my email, and I'm available by Zoom whenever you want. Uh, in terms of the book, this is the uh, book. Um, it's a pretty good book. I like it. Um, you can get it in the bookstore. Um, anecdotally, some people have told me there's free PDFs of it online. Um, that's for you to figure out. Um, but uh, you'll definitely need that. Uh, and I'm going to show you in a few minutes why you will. I'm sure you probably hear from a lot of professors you'll need the book and you never do. This is definitely not the class. Uh, here is all of the objectives uh, and whatnot. Um, this is how you're graded. I'll go through everything else later. Um, the part I want to spend the time on um, right now is this. Uh, and before I go over that, I want to kind of show you um, where I say topic and chapter readings, what I mean by that. This is a, a screenshot from a previous section uh, that I had in the fall. I've been making a lot of changes to the course to make it more user-friendly. Um, based on surveys, uh, I ask students what they think, and I adapt things to make them better. Uh, this question is, how critical is reading the textbook to success in the class? And uh, answer one is not at all, uh, and answer five is absolutely critical. And as you'll see here, uh, there were 19 responses. 70% of the people said it's absolutely critical. So. Uh, in this case, don't take it from me. Take it from your fellow students. Uh, this is not a class that you're going to be able to do very well in if you actually don't read. So let's just kind of talk about uh, how it's organized and um, how students have told me the best way for you guys to go ahead and approach this class. So every you'll see that this is literally your calendar of everything. Um, starting on 2-7, you're going to attack uh, ch Chapter 1. Uh, I have resources besides the tech book, textbook for you. I'm going to show you those in a little bit. But uh, your basic work as far as what's due is uh, you're reading Chapter 1. You have a discussion on Chapter 1, a quiz on Chapter 1, uh, and, of course, procedural details form. That's just a one-time thing you have to sign and submit. All that's due um, 2.13, which is uh, Sunday. And then, of course, the next week you have Chapter 2, discussion, quiz, repeat, all the way down the line. Uh, these are your exam days. Your exams are taken by respondents, so you want to make sure that you um, have respondents downloaded on your uh, computer. And I have a fake one question, um, just assignment to make sure that before you take the exam, everything works. If you do that uh, in a certain amount of time, um, then you will get five points added to your exam grade, which is great. So these are the dates. You get two days to take the exams. Um, you can read this all the way down the line. So let's, you know, you can, all the other stuff in the course policies, that is for you to read. So let's get into the course itself. First thing you're going to do, of course, is counterintuitive, which is watch the video that you don't see right now because it's, I'm making it, but it will be right here. Uh, so well, clearly you've done that. Um, obviously the syllabus is here as well. When you click on syllabus, you're going to see there's also a course procedural details form. Uh, this is... Uh, the form itself, uh, you're going to sign this and you are going to uh, send it to me. There is a spot for that. Um, and so that's great. That's due by the 13th. That's a one-time deal. Um, so how is the course organized beyond that? Well, I'm not just going to leave you to the wolves, um, but today is Saturday. Um, starting tomorrow, uh, I'm going to open up a, um area for you to register um, for Edpuzzle. And basically you just click on the link. Uh, it'll send you, and I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like now. So this is what it will look like as of tomorrow. You're just going to click here, register for Edpuzzle. This is free. Uh, you're going to go here. It's going to open up a new screen. And basically what you're going to do is if you've used Edpuzzle before, you can go ahead and sign in, but I doubt any of you have. You're going to go all the way up in the corner over here and hit sign up. Uh, and then, you know, you're, once again, you can hit sign up. Don't be hitting all the sign in stuff here. And it's, hey, look, there's my class. So this is, uh, you're going to put in your first name, last name, a username, and a password, and hit join class, and you're in. And from that point, you're done. You don't need to really go to this anymore because everything is organized through the course. Um, so now if I go through the course, I'm going to explain what those are. Um, 
let's move down the line again. This is just first day of class. So now you've already done the watch the video. You've done the procedural form and send it to me. You have, and they'll be right under here uh, will be a place for you to upload that. Um, and then uh, you've registered for Edpuzzle. Then the next thing is before March 10th, you're going to go ahead and do this literal one question test. It's a fake test. It basically says, can you see this question? You say yes. It's to make sure all of your Respondus browser stuff is working before you take the exam. I don't want you guys to sit there and take the exam and not have downloaded and you get in the exam and something goes wrong and you're freaking out. Uh, let's have your computer set up with a fake exam that doesn't count. If you do it before the end of the day on March 10th, you get five points added to your test. If you don't, you get no points added to your test. Uh, pretty straightforward. So um, how does everything work in terms of the learning? So here's my suggestion for you. Um, there, there's an order that I would suggest. Um, the first thing that you're going to see here is this is everything for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. Um, that's all in the first exam. If I were you, the first thing I would do is I would look at the exam study guide um, because that's going to tell you exactly what's on the exam. Um, I literally went through question by question and it's not a secret. Uh, this is what it's on. Uh, so it tells you exactly what is going to be on the exam, what's not. I go into even more particular details about this. Uh, a lot of these kind of help with the answering of the questions. Um, take them or leave them. They're here for you. Uh, but they all relate directly back to these. These are the major points of the exam. And there you go. So at least now you know exactly what you're studying. So now that you are um, familiar, let's talk about what some of these things are. First things, there'll be an overview sometimes, uh, or not really what it is. You can see it's just a uh, connection directly to the discussion post. You can find discussion posts here, or you can find discussions under discussions, or you can find them under assignments. They're literally everywhere with all of the uh, different ways everything is connected. Um, so moving down to the uh, particular um, part of the unit stuff, what are these things? Well, these are... Um, little Ed Puzzle videos, and some are animated like this, and some of them I made myself. But regardless, what I did is I added in all kinds of assessment questions. Um, so there's one. If I just take a look at another one, this is why you registered, by the way, for uh, Ed Puzzle. Um, let me go ahead, and that's not loading up. Let me uh, let me pause my computer here for a second. My uh, Google just crashed. Anyway, I loaded back up. So. Uh, when you click on a lot of these, you're going to see it's going to take you to what looks like a little teeny tiny box. And all you're going to do is click Get Started. Now, you've already registered for Edpuzzle. That's what this is. So when you hit uh, Get Started, you'll see that this is a very, you know, most of my videos I make for lecture five to six minutes long. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of you uh, aren't going to watch videos if I make them a lot longer, and I'll talk about that later. But you'll notice this looks like a YouTube video. However, there's these little teardrops in the bottom, and these are actual assessment questions that I write that are embedded into this as you're learning. Edpuzzle is not graded. I repeat, all of the Edpuzzle lectures, and I've probably made about 35 of them, are not graded. It's going to tell you whether you got these answers right or wrong. It has nothing to do with your grade. It's the learning part, uh, and they're all designed specifically for what's on the test. So, you know, the first thing I would do if I were you is make it full screen. Um, you're not going to be able to see all this because of the view, but there's the, the full screen from here. Um, I literally just push play, and the video begins. Um, and as it goes through, uh, I you'll notice that it looks like it's stagnant. It's actually, um, uh, here we go. He's talking. Great, lovely, awesome stuff. And here we go. He's a really cool dude. Um, so I know you can't hear it, but basically he's doing a very short discussion. Just made it a little smaller to see. And what you would basically do is go through and answer uh, the questions that will tell you literally when you do it, whether they're right or wrong on the spot, um, which is kind of a good way to help. The first time you go through the videos, you cannot skip around, but after you do it one time, you can skip um, wherever you want. If there are any open-ended um, questions, you can go actually to uh, the Edpuzzle uh, page. Yours is going to look a little different than this, obviously, um, because I this is my teacher view. But these are a lot of the videos. I wanted to show you some um, from another class that some of them are open-ended. And so what I do is I then go through any of the open-ended uh, questions that students write. And I basically just say whether they're correct or incorrect. That's right. 
uh, and I say UG, that's also right. So anything where you would be open-ended, um, I would be grading it that way, and you can see it um, as well. So it's a really good way to organize uh, and learn. So um, many of these are ed puzzles. Some of these are not. Some of these are things that were previously um, used by the professor of this course. Um, so these are longer videos. These are like the, your more typical um, talking over a PowerPoint in a lot more uh, detail. Some students like these, other students didn't. They feel that it was very just kind of talking to through the PowerPoint. So you have a mix of both um, learning styles here. You have animated um, and you have more of the standardized version. So you have plenty of resources to help you all the way through your learning as you go. So my suggestion would be um, to go ahead and do all of these first and then go read the book. That's my suggestion um, because then you can just basically fill in the gaps of your learning as you go through the textbook. Um, it's a very technical textbook. It's a very good textbook. But this I designed for you to give you a foundation. There is no use in you going through the different ways, for example, that DNA repairs itself um, if you don't understand the fundamental structure of DNA. And so that's kind of the idea of how I want to make sure that I will get you on the same playing field. So here's all of your learning um, all the way down the line. Obviously, your assignments uh, are listed here. Uh, and uh, these are basically kind of in order. Um, so you see exactly what's due when. Um, and I will be making notes on your discussions. Um, there, are, By the way, just so you know, there are 90 of you. So if I take a quick look at this and assume that there's about uh, 30 um, different assignments, that's 2,700 responses. There is no way in the world I'm going to be able to give all of you feedback uh, on every single discussion that you have. But I will attempt to give you the first one. I will. I will answer everyone's. Um, but you know anything that stuck out, or, or if you, you did something wrong, or you need a little bit more information, I will definitely comment about. Or if something was exemplary, I will comment about it. Uh, if there is no comment, it just means great job, you did fine. So I'm going to let you know if it was really awesome or it really needs work. That's kind of how it's going to go. Otherwise, I'd be grading for weeks and weeks on end. So uh, that is the foundation of the course. You also, um, don't forget, you have me. Uh, that's why I'm here. Um, I've, I like to Zoom with students whenever they have issues. So your job is basically whenever you've gone through this stuff, uh, you know, you can email me and say, hey, Dr. B, I didn't understand um, you know, non-homologous end joining. Can you help me with that? What I won't do is, hey, Dr. B, can you explain Chapter 4 to me? That's not going to happen. Um, so everything is laid out here first, uh, and it's all here for your success. So I look forward to helping you all out, and uh, good luck in your learning.